Hello everyone and welcome to another session of AP Human Geography with Mr. Elrod. Today we are going to begin Unit 5, discussion on agriculture and rural land use. Hope you like the country feel and introduction there. And in my background I was looking for something a little bit more, oh I don't know, organic you might say to go along with the theme of the unit. So anyway, I hope you uh, enjoy those particular things. So as we uh, begin our unit, uh, our discussion on agriculture, I guess first of all, the first thing we'll come to is is the discussion on how important agriculture really is, because obviously agriculture is the most common form uh, that we use in our world today for getting uh, for people getting their food. Okay, so this is the most common way that people in our world today uh, are going to uh, grow and uh, get their food for consumption. Obviously, agriculture comes after uh, the development of hunter-gatherer societies. Hunter-gatherer societies are much more inefficient. It's much more difficult to uh, to get the food that is necessary to to have uh, constant supplies of food. And so, agriculture all the way around really is just uh, is a much better method for uh, for many different reasons. So, uh, when we look at uh, the world again, the world that we have today, out of about a, a population in our world of over seven billion, uh, there's only about 250,000 hunter-gatherers that are still alive in the world today. So hunting and get and those numbers are based on at least the 250,000 is based on uh, research from a couple of years ago. Um, so who knows? Maybe today it's even less uh, because of the encroachment of uh, modern society onto uh, areas where hunters and gatherers are and kind of the pressures that are put on their food source and those types of things. So when we talk about the importance of agriculture, agriculture is, is clearly important because some of the things that it allows for are uh, permanent human settlement. It allows for people to sit down in one place uh, to begin to build a more sophisticated society, uh, allows them to improve upon the things that they have uh, in terms of the type of housing that they have, the infrastructure, uh, the uh, their social development in terms of uh, whether it's education or whether it's philosophies or religions or, gov or uh, governments, any of those types of things. Uh, really, agriculture is necessary to develop more sophisticated elements of those things because uh, you have consistent food supply, you tend to have safer food supply, and also you're not running around trying to follow uh, your food supply. It's, it's there, it's ready for you in one particular place. So it allows for permanent human settlement, it allows for, as permanent human settlement allows for uh, development to take place and also like I was talking about just a second ago is a more sophisticated uh, society and, and you know and by that we mean civilization more sophisticated civilization is able to take place because not all of your energy is uh, expended trying to hunt and search for food when we talk about agriculture in our world today uh, we categorize it in two ways and we'll talk more about further categorization but generally speaking there are two umbrellas uh, of how we categorize agriculture and those are commercial agriculture or commercial farming and subsistence agriculture. So basically the difference between the two is that in commercial farming or commercial agriculture the primary purpose of the agriculture of the agricultural production uh, is to sell your crops or your animals at market. So you're trying to make a profit off of it. Now certainly you can take some of the things on your farm and you can consume them for your family but you're trying to create a surplus so that you can uh, you can exchange your surplus crops or animals uh, for money so that you can then exchange that money for other things. And when we talk about commercial agriculture, it typically is illustrated or the characteristics of it are uh, tend to be larger. They tend to be more capital intensive. Uh, we have they're characterized by uh, large machines, as you can see here in this upper right hand corner. Uh, and also the consumption and the need for energy in order to uh, you know, cover this wide area of land and, and grow crops on it. We talk about subsistence agriculture. Essentially it is characterized by only growing enough crops or raising enough animals in order to provide for the immediate family uh, that is being sustained by that particular farm. So in subsistence agriculture it's much smaller in scale uh, the technology is much less. Typically the people are living uh, much simpler lives. Uh, tend, we tend to find in lower areas of development and things along those lines. And so those are the two primary differences. Now again, when we talk about commercial agriculture and subsistence agriculture, 
Uh, we can break it down even further and talk about some different characteristics, but those are two of the, two of the big categories. And I guess when we talk about agriculture, it would be good to maybe define agriculture, but agriculture is simply uh, the intentional raising of uh, crops or animals for consumption. That's really all agriculture is. And so in agriculture, there are some competing theories on how agriculture develops, but one of the more popular or I guess uh, discussed theories is, uh, is by the cultural geographer Carl Sauer. Uh, and he discusses the origin of agriculture not as a part of uh, seed planting. When we typically think of agriculture, we think of uh, domestication of plants and animals. We think of planting seeds and raising animals and things like that. He believes the origin of agriculture comes from vegetative planting. And vegetative planting essentially is where you take uh, the parts of plants, uh, whether it's the root systems or limbs from trees, and you plant those parts of a plant in order to create more plants for production. Uh, and so he does not believe that seed agriculture comes uh, in much, uh, until much later. And so he believes the origin or the hearth of this uh, vegetative planting is from Southeast Asia. And he believes that because of uh, the climate of Southeast Asia, it's much more humid. You have a kind of a greater, I guess, uh, diversity of animal, uh, not animals, but plants. Um, and, and the types of plants that are found in the tropical parts uh, of the world, uh, you know, more of these root-based crops and things like that that are much easier to separate and replant and have a much uh, higher success rate of regeneration and things like that. And so from Southeast Asia, he believes that it diffuses to places like China, Japan, uh, parts of Africa, Southwest Asia, so forth and so on. He also believes that uh, vegetative planting had uh, separate origins or separate hearths in the Andes Mountains uh, in Latin America and also in parts of West Africa. Now he believes that these two these two places had uh, separate origins because because uh, of the physical barriers that exist uh, between uh, Southeast Asia and these parts of the world. Of course, physical barriers uh, to the Andes Mountains. We're talking about um, talking about the Atlantic Ocean. Clearly. Uh, a physical barrier that's going to be difficult for ancient peoples to traverse. And then things like the Sahara Desert for those that are living in, uh, in, in uh, West Africa. And then it's not, much, and not until much later that uh, the people are able to uh, develop seed agriculture. And so seed agriculture is exactly what uh, it sounds like. You are taking the, the seeds that come off of the plants. You're going to plant those seeds uh, and to create new plants which are going to uh, produce new fruit which you then can store, you can dry, you can grind them into things um, you know you can again you can store them for for the next year so you can replant and seed agriculture is a great improvement over vegetative planting because you're you are able to number one you can store the seed for future use but not only that you tend to have higher yields of plants using seed agriculture I always like to use the illustration of corn if, and obviously the ear of corn that we have today, uh, ear of corn we have today is much larger than ears of corn in history. Uh, but if you take one ear of corn, uh, you know you had it took one kernel of corn to grow uh, a corn stalk which has several ears on it, and then each ear you know can contain I guess uh, you know up to at least a hundred seeds, may, you know maybe more. I'm not up to date on my on the number of kernels that come on an uh, ear of corn, but you've seen an ear of corn, you know. Uh, that there are lots and lots of kernels on there and so one seed produces all those kernels of corn and all the possibilities uh, that exist for those kernels of corn whether we dry them and store them whether we make them into a meal uh, sometime maybe we pop them uh, for fun and we have some yummy popcorn and all of that is it's uh, it allows for the you know it allows for the possibility that you have a lot more years of corn and then also if there's the possibility of failure obviously not all those kernels of corn are going to grow into a stalk of corn um, some of them are going to die, some of them are not going to germinate, all those other types of things. So because you have so many, you, the odds of you getting um, you know, a successful crop are much higher. Uh, whereas in vegetative planting, you had to take the actual plants and replant them. Uh, and so you know, the, the yield uh, was much lower. The fruit that you were getting was much lower year over year. Uh, and typically, those, uh, those types of plants are much harder to store. Um, and it, it took much longer to, to get the fruit that you're looking for out of those plants. 
Well, that's all that we're going to do for, day, for today. That is our introduction into agriculture. Uh, so I hope you found that helpful, and I hope to see you next time.